think Moana resonated with audiences to such a huge degree? I think Moana resonated with audiences because of who she is. I love that she is strong and has such respect and love for her family and community, and that she isn't afraid to grab a demigod by the ear and say, you will write this wrong between nature and man. Um, and I think the film itself is such a celebration of Pacific Island culture. When Moana puts her hand up to the, to the horizon line, she's measuring the degrees between the horizon and the stars to measure how far she is and how far she needs to go. All of that is, is so important in our film of fleshing it out to be a Disney classic. What does this character mean to you personally? Oh, this character means so much to me. Moana not only started my career, but truly took me beyond the reef. I was cast when I was 14. I turned 24 in just a couple of days. So I've had Moana in my bones for a decade now. And that's also a generation I realize, and a generation of children and parents alike who have watched this movie nonstop and made it one of the most, if not the most streamed film on Disney Plus at the moment. It, it my heart is so full and I'm really thankful for the fans out there. Explain where Moana 2 picks up after the first film. How has Moana grown since we first met her? Moana has absolutely grown since we've last seen her. So three years have passed from our last film and she has become a Tautai, a master navigator. She's been voyaging out on the open ocean, searching for new islands and truthfully searching for people. There has to be more people than just her island of Motunui. Um, so she teams up once again with Maui, but also a whole new crew. We have Loto, Moni, and Kele to meet all new villains. The Kakamora are back. Pua and Heihei are on the canoe this time. We've got a good group. Introduce us to Moana's little sister and describe their relationship. Moana's little sister is Simea and she's the sweetest character I've seen in a while. Every time she's on screen, she grabs at my heart. And I think she does the same for Moana as well. When Moana journeys further and further, it means that she's gone from home for longer periods of time. And Simea is what really draws her back. I have little cousins and I know at that age of three, they grow so quickly. Um, and it's also, I think, a really beautiful way of showing how much Moana's village has changed. When Moana was growing up, wayfinding was out of the question. And now for Simea, she gets to see her older sister shine and become a Tautai and know that the world is truly her oyster. What is Moana's relationship like with Maui these days? Moana and Maui's relationship is stronger than ever. In our first film, we saw Moana get Maui out of his rut, and it's kind of turned on its head in the second film. They have such a wonderful friendship where demigod and human, they are learning and pushing each other, and I, I love their relationship in this film. What is Moana's mission in the new film? Ooh, Moana's mission in this film is to connect the people of all the Pacific. Totai Vasa has a fantastic line that's something similar to, in isolation, we will all fade away. And I think that's so powerful, even in mindset, to think of the Pacific Islands, not as small islands in the middle of the sea, but giant ocean states, and that this ocean truly connects all of us. It is a point of Pacific pride. And on an even bigger scale, that connection of community, I think, can be felt even beyond the Pacific. Talk, talk about how this mission is so much bigger. Who does she recruit for her crew? This mission is bigger than anything we've seen before. If you thought Moana went far beyond the reef, the first film, she's going even farther, which means she needs a crew. So she has Loto, Moni, and Kele. Kele is a farmer on the ocean, not the happiest to be there, but he understands that it's important by journeying so much further out, you need someone who will keep your crew fed for long periods of time. We have Moni, who is a storyteller who's absolutely integral as Pacific Islanders have oral history. So keeping these stories in check, keeping all of the adventures locked in his noggin is absolutely important. And then Loto, who is a master tinkerer. She's always trying to make the canoe even just this much better, and she really saves the day. How does music and song help tell this story? 
music and song are so important to this story and every Disney story in my opinion. I am a theater kid. I love it when people break out into spontaneous song. But for Moana specifically, I think it's so fun that we get to see Moana's growth truly tracked through song. If you remember how far I'll go, we kind of answer that question with I'll go beyond in this film. We also have wonderful songs by Barlow and Bear that flesh out Maui. We have wonderful songs from our villains as well about thinking out of the box, living dangerously, perhaps getting lost in order to find your way. I think all of these morals are really fun and are honestly pretty bops. Describe the song Beyond, mm. your experience performing it and its role in the storytelling. Uh, Beyond is to me an incredible power ballad written by Barlow and Bear. It talks about how far you're willing to go in order to learn truly who you are, but also, and I relate to this deeply, who you are when you leave your home. And I feel that as I've gone further and further beyond the reef. And I love that we've tracked Moana's growth, not only through voice, not only through story, but also now through music. One final question. Mm. Describe the look of the film. Oh. If I had to describe the look of this film, I would say it is colorful. I love seeing all the flora and fauna that I am familiar with of the Pacific Islands. I would say that the ocean looks better than ever. It reminds me of home. Um, I love seeing the characters that I know and love. Pua is along for the ride this time. We listen to the fans. We've got the crew that we love. And then we have all new villains and Kakamora as well. So overall, I think that there's something for everyone and it's great to be back. Describe your introduction to Moana as a character. What would you have thought if you had known then that you would be writing the songs to the sequel? I think both of our heads would have exploded. I mean, we are the Disney generation. We grew up on this. I was in middle school when it came out. I was quite literally the target audience. Mm -hmm. um, so truly, never in a million years. My first experience with Moana was seeing it in, in theaters with my family, um, which is just crazy. Yeah, 16, 15 year old me, she, she became a puddle when we got this job. How do you relate personally to Moana? Honestly, I think that was one of the biggest things of this experience was that we could see ourselves so deeply in her. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, we too are just girls um, <laughs> trying to figure out our place in the world. And Moana is so inspiring and so brave and so powerful, but she is a human mm -hmm. and she has some very human moments in this movie. And seeing how she took those moments and, you know, used them to learn and grow from them instead of letting them beat her down was so inspiring to mm -hmm. me. Um, I think it helped us in the writing process, to be honest. Yeah. I think our real life journey of writing this music allowed me to relate a lot to Moana's journey to find Motufetu because she's doing something that's bigger than herself. Yeah. And uh, when we were, you know, tapped to write this, we were being asked to do just that. What was your jumping off point for this film? What is Moana 2 about? There was a quote on the wall of the story room from day one, which was, you never stop choosing who you are. And I feel like that became kind of like the emotional pillar of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, because as she finds out, getting lost can be the pathway to finding magic and you don't need to know where you're going mm -hmm. to, to find yourself and um, I think waking up every day and knowing that we are different versions of ourselves, but that it's okay and we choose to be ourselves every day is beautiful. Yeah. I think the first film was Moana, you know, discovering and re, uh, re uh, connecting with their past. And now this film is about the future of her and her people and the connecting of all the people of the entire ocean, which is no small feat. Yeah, I think Moana one was Moana finding herself truly. Um, and this is, you know, she goes through a lot of that in this movie too, but it's really about community um, and connecting with community. And I think that the I versus we sentiment is very indicative of like the values of the Pacific. Mm -hmm. 
So what is the role of the songs in this film, mm. the big picture? How do they move the story forward? I feel like the songs in this film are very much the emotional anchor. Um, not just the English speaking songs, but the, the music that um, Opatai Fwai and Mark Mancino worked on as well. Oh, it's so pretty. Uh, it's just, it's beautiful. And, you know, ultimately I think it leans into the Polynesian culture. You know, we, we wanted to pay homage to the world that was already created and add our own little flair to it because, yeah. you know, the the story, the world and the expanse of Moana has just grown so much in the three years that since we've seen her last. Yeah, I think each song is so different and serves a very different purpose. Like a song like Beyond is about the internal struggle that she's going through, you know, having to give up her dream life, you know? Mm -hmm. And something like Get Lost is much more veiled in secrecy and it's very elusive and it's it's meant to be a show, mm -hmm. but we have to figure out what she's actually meeting with her words. You know, what could be better than this is a comedic song that's supposed to like get you to fall in love with our new characters a little bit, while also being kind of tongue in cheek um, and sarcastic and funny and you know, they're, they're all so different. We're back, brings you back into the world of Moana and it's just supposed to show you how everyone's grown and how they're thriving and how the village has, you know, just become abundant of you know with life yeah can i get a chi who is maui's redemption song because <laughs> <laughs> you know in the first film he needed the spirit booing and and in this film he does it for moana um and it's yeah we we think that each song is is very specific to the characters that it serves describe the process working with the directors and writers to craft the songs for the film <sighs> We wonderful. love everyone so much. Yeah, it's a big family over yeah. at Disney Animation. I mean, it is, it takes a village. I mean, we are one of 700 people that made this movie come to life. And from day one, like, it's so apparent that all the filmmakers, the directors, the writers, they love what they do so much. And being in a room full of people that passionate mm -hmm. is like the most inspiring place to be as a young writer. Yeah. It, yeah, it was very collaborative and they always made sure our voices felt heard and, you know, it was a magical thing working in the Disney animation offices. Provide a sentence or two about each of the five songs, Oopsies. how you found the song, <laughs> your thoughts on the performance, and an anecdote about writing it. Mm. Okay. So the first one is, we're, we're back. back. We're back. Yes, We're Back is our opening number, and it brings you back into the world you know and love of Moana. And it shows you how much her village has grown, how much she's grown as a leader, and, you know, bringing back this wonderful artifact that she gets to show her people. While also showing how Tui and Sina have grown, you get introduced to our new characters. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's the most rooted fully in the world that we know and love. We have some callbacks, the first movie, yeah. um, which leads us to song number two, which is Beyond, Beyond. my favorite song. <laughs> um, this song has my favorite moment in it because she reaches that note, the orchestra swells, and you're like, yes, Moana, <laughs> sing! That's our girl. <laughs> but it's kind of like a spiritual successor to How Far I'll Go because it's a similar place. She's about to leave again, but everything's changed. You know, she has the dream life that she wanted in the first movie. Mm -hmm. And now she's being asked to give it all up. And that is scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, The next song that we were a part of was What Could Be Better Than This, um, which is sort of a, an ensemble crew number that takes place on the canoe. And they're just setting off on this journey. And Moana's really trying to get them all excited about it because they're all in their own little world. It's a hot mess. It's a hot mess. They don't know how to work together as a crew yet. So she's trying to get them to work together. So think of her as like an overbearing camp counselor. He's like, come on guys, yep. let's do this together. <laughs> um, but through the song, we get to fall in love with our new characters a little bit more, mm. get a little of their personalities. I love Kele in it, but Loto. Loto, Loto has, has her moment. moment. <laughs> yep. Um, and so that one's fun. Uh -huh. uh, the next song is Get Lost, which is her favorite song. Uh -huh. Um, yes, it, <laughs> it is my favorite song. Um, Pass the ball to you. Yes, okay. uh, and it's sung by our sort of villainous 
mysterious character Matangi, who lives in a giant clam. <laughs> and because of course. Because of course. Uh, and it was inspired by, you know, real life wayfinders telling us that getting lost was a pathway to magic. And we thought, what a fierce title for a song. She needs a diva song because she is a diva. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is Can I Get a Chi Who? Which is our dear Maui song. And that one was a little bit of a challenge because we wanted the Maui that we know and love, but we also wanted to show how much he's grown and how much he cares for Moana and how much their relationship means to him while also giving him a moment and an epic number and a spectacle, yeah. which we did get with 27,000 mud skippers. <laughs> the animation is incredible. It's insane. And then we have the final Beyond Reprise, which is Moana's, you know, hero moment uh, at the end of the film. And not giving too much away, she does go beyond. 